Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to the morning show on the new Main Street TV. We are so happy to have you with us, whether you're watching here live in the morning or our replay at night. Doesn't matter, we're just happy to have you spend some time with us on this Friday. Of course, Jennifer here to start off the morning news update with our good friend Pete Wilson, and that is brought to you by Nia Henry Agent for Appalachia Realty. If you are looking to buy or sell or whatever real estate needs you might have or questions, please give Nia a call at 740-418-4135 and she'll help you out along the way, we promise. Right, our good friend and buddy Pete Wilson is here. It is the weekend and I know that you're full of information. Okay, well we've got some uh, past, present and future to talk about. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of things going on this weekend, and that's what we'll talk about on the on the tail end of the report. But yesterday, uh, the news uh, was centered around a wreck out on U.S. Route 35 by the roadside rest. Uh, that's about three miles from the Ross County line, and a big semi tractor trailer, uh, FedEx, with a double trailer, somehow wrapped itself around a light pole there along the highway uh, right as you're coming out of the rest area stop. Now the driver and the passenger were not hurt. I don't think it was real serious as far as uh, damage to the vehicle and the trailers were concerned. However, uh, diesel fuel, uh, the diesel fuel tanks were punctured and about 50 gallons of diesel fuel came out onto the highway, uh, actually uh, on the ramp coming off the roadside rest and it went into the grass. And when it goes into the grass and the soil, it becomes an environmental issue. And so uh, the EPA showed up on the scene, the hazmat team uh, was out there, and uh, one lane of the westbound lanes uh, on 35 as you're heading towards Chillicothe was closed for a couple of hours. Uh, later on in the afternoon, they had the whole highway open, and I presume that everything is cleaned up now. But uh, a lot of folks on that road, of course, and that uh, caused a lot of attention. But as it turned out, uh, didn't turn out to be serious, uh, no injuries involved, uh, but a massive cleanup task. So, and that went on uh, deep into the afternoon with the things that they have to do to absorb that fuel so it doesn't get into uh, the groundwater. All right, as far as the COVID-19 update goes, nothing new from the Jackson County Health Department. Uh, from the Vinton County Health Department, uh, there were no new cases reported yesterday. Uh, there you see uh, the infographic that the Vinton County Health Department puts out. Uh, the current uh, stats are four active cases in Vinton County, uh, no new deaths, so there's been a total of 19 deaths. The good news, nobody in the hospital. Active cases are down a little bit. And the day before, uh, which we didn't talk about yesterday, there were two new cases and one new probable case, but still uh, the case counts very low in Vinton County right now. In Jackson County, the last report we have, of course, we had a positive report there in terms of progress. I believe it was 18 cases over a seven day period. And uh, that was good news because that was less than the previous two reports. So we'll keep an eye on that. Of course, vaccinations that continue to be available for those who have not had it yet. I don't think that there is a single person who hasn't had the chance to get the vaccine uh, so far. And so there's lots of opportunities to get uh, the vaccinations. Remember, the health experts are concerned about young people being willing to get the vaccine and even the children uh, where parents are not having their children get the vaccine, concerned about potential exposures on down the line. So we'll see how that goes. Next Tuesday in Jackson County and in some counties around the state, uh, there will be a primary or special election. That will be the case in Jackson County. There are two items on the ballot. Of course, yesterday we heard from uh, the folks from the Jackson County Board of Aging about their five tenths of a mill additional levy, uh, which if passed would help finance the construction of a new senior citizen center uh, in Jackson. Uh, there you see the current Senior Citizen Center in Jackson. And if it looks like an old school, that's exactly what it is. It's the old Mound Street School, dates back nearly 100 years. And uh, that site, uh, through age and uh, the, just the, uh, the uh, lack, uh, the, the antiquated facilities inside, 
and the lack of space, it has become incumbent upon the Board of Aging to seek a new, a new place. So they would like to build a new center out on AC Avenue. They've got the land, but they need the money to build uh, the facility. And all the money to build the facility would not come from this levy, just a portion of it. So that is the big item on the, on the Jackson County levy on Tuesday. It will be all, uh, all across the county. Then there is one other item on the ballot, but it's just in one precinct in Wellston, and that is for a GOP nomination for a city councilman spot. We'll talk a little bit more about what's on the ballot uh, closer to the election on Monday. But we do want to remind you that uh, if you're in Jackson County, uh, there are early voting hours this weekend. You can go up until 7 p.m. tonight at the Jackson County Board of Elections office. That's at 275 Portsmouth Street in the Courthouse Annex building right here in downtown Jackson. You can also vote Saturday and 1 to 5 on Sunday, and then I believe 8 to 2 on Monday. So lots of opportunities, uh, convenience-wise, to cast ballots here in Jackson County ahead of Election Day, which of course is Tuesday. Uh, in Vinton County, there is no primary or special election. All right, of course, uh, this weekend, and we're going to get to a lot more on this here with our special guests in a few minutes, but there is a Wild Turkey Festival Queens contest for the uh, 2021 festival, which is happening, uh, thankfully, as the restrictions eased a little bit, which allowed the festival committee to hurry up and get all the activities and organizations uh, together. So, you know, there could be a full festival this year, and so they are to be commended for all the work they did as they kind of kept an eye on what the governor was allowing and what they felt they could do. And so it is on next week, uh, starting uh, next Thursday through Sunday on the downtown streets of MacArthur. This weekend, one of the first big festival events is the Queen's Contest. Seven candidates are running. And later on, we're going to meet the three queens that represented the festival in 2019 and by default 2020 as well. So they did double duty there representing the Wild Turkey Festival, and we appreciate them coming, as well as uh, the festival committee leaders, Bill Beckley and Chris Cram. We'll hear a lot more about next week's uh, festival from them here in just a few minutes. Also this weekend, the Oak Hill Festival of Flags. Of course, the festival in Oak Hill is on Memorial Day weekend. They have moved up their Queen's Contest. Instead of having it the, you know, the week of the festival, they're having it several weeks early. It will be on Saturday night as well. Uh, it will be at 6.30 p.m. at the Liberty a Liberty Theater Community Center. It will be limited attendance because of the pandemic, but it's going to be live streamed. And of course, the Vinton County uh, contest restricted attendance there too for the same reason. I believe it's at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. on Saturday. All right, and of course, this is the weekend for uh, the uh, high school play in Jackson. It's actually at the Jackson Middle School Auditorium. Three performances, Jennifer, and here is a scene uh, from the dress rehearsal that I went to yesterday, and it's a, in the form of a musical review. Uh, that way, it's a little bit easier to practice social distancing and still put on a production. Uh, it's uh, some of the top songs from uh, recent Broadway hits uh, that are being performed by uh, the Jackson High School Drama Club and they're in costumes, they have a great looking set as you can see there. I was able to see a portion of that musical review yesterday, it's definitely worth seeing. The last thing I heard, even though there is limited attendance because of the pandemic, there are a few tickets available. You go online on the Jackson City Schools website to get those tickets. Performances 7 p.m. Friday, 7 p.m. Saturday, and 3 p.m. on Sunday. It's called Heroes Versus Villains. And remember, it's at the Middle School Auditorium. We wish Kathy Lord and all those kids the best of luck. Big evening at Wellston High School tomorrow. It's the prom. They're going to be able to do that too. Of course, there's special restrictions. Vinton County already had their prom last weekend. But this weekend on Saturday at Wellston, it will start with the Grand March at 6 o'clock, followed by the prom at 7 o'clock, and then the after party at 10 o'clock, the after party will be at the middle school. Of course, the Grand March is a big social event. A lot of parents and relatives and students like to attend that uh, but beyond the participants. And because of the pandemic, not anybody can go to the Grand March, which is at six o'clock. It is a ticketed event. Each prom goer has been given two tickets. So even though they're having it and it's kind of a public event, it's closed to the public. It's 
with an asterisk there, but at least they're going to be able to do it. And when the kids are going through the Grand March, they'll be able to take their masks off, but all other times they've got to have those masks on, even during the prom when they're dancing with each other. They can't dance with anybody else, and there has to be social distancing while they're dancing. So a lot to kind of remember there, but they're getting the prom in at least, so that's, that's great. No food served because of the pandemic. They will have drinks for the kids. After party, once again, at the middle school at 10 o'clock. Parent, the parents have got together to do that. That is not a school-sponsored event. Also, this Saturday in Wellston, earlier in the day, uh, the Wellston Community Garden kickoff will be taking place. Uh, the Wellston Rotary Club uh, is involved in that. Uh, one of the extra activities that is going to take place is the dedication of a peace pole there in Pride Park. That's where the community garden is, and that will take place at 1 o'clock. After the community garden kickoff and activities there with the peace pole, they're going to be spreading around town to do clean up work. Also in the morning in Wellston, I told you there was lots of stuff mm -hmm. going on. It's opening day in Wellston for the youth baseball, softball, and sports activities. Uh, it, there will be a parade in downtown Wellston at 10.30 a.m. They'll have a ceremonial first pitch, uh, I believe, at noon at the State Route 327 fields. Mark Irvin will be honored this year. He will be throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. And then from noon on or after the ceremony there, baseball, softball, all day. And then I imagine they'll end up at Dairy Queen later on. <laughs> All right. And this is also the last day if you want to make a nomination for an inductee to the Jackson City Schools Hall of Honor. They are inviting people to make nominations for people who are deserving of this honor. But this is your last day to get that in. You can contact or drop off your nomination to the Southern Ohio Smiles office. Uh, the reason that, that they are doing it there is Dr. Brian Morris is a school board member and he's in charge of that activity for the district. You can also drop off that nomination at the superintendent's office there up on the hill by the high school. This is the last day for the Southern Hills Arts Council Jackson Vinton High School Art Show. Uh, this is the last day where uh, you can see that art. There will be a new exhibit that will open uh, next Thursday, but there are uh, art exhibits by high school students from all four local high schools, Jackson High School, Vinton County High School, Oak Hill High School, and Oak Hill High School. All right, uh, State Route 683, a section of that in Vinton County will be closed May 3rd and 4th. That's next Monday and Tuesday through a culvert replacement project. They expect, uh, they expect this closure uh, to last two days and it will be between Vinton County Road 37, that's Mount Zion Road, and Richland Township Road 20, that's Locker Plant Coleman Road. Of course, a lot of folks uh, live on 683 and cut through there uh, on their way to here and there, and so folks should be aware of that. Today, the Jackson Lions Club and tomorrow will be holding a Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation fundraiser. They're going to be selling veals and other goodies at the Farmer Sportsman booth on Veterans Drive. And so, you know, if you like the Lowe's Lions Club veals that we get during the Apple Festival, this is your chance to get them early for a very good cause. Uh, they will be there 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. both days. That's on Veterans Drive, and that is by the Lions Club. They'll have some other things for sale, too, but they're featuring the veal sandwiches. Tomorrow, the Run Through the Sun motorcycle ride will take place uh, they'll start out in Jackson. This is the Christian Motorcyclist Association doing it. This is part of a national thing by the Christian Motorcyclist Association. There will be Run for the Sons all over the place. It's Run for the Sun, Sun, S-O-N, meaning Son Jesus Christ, not S-U-N, Sun up in the air. And this is to uh, raise uh, awareness uh, for what the Christian Motorcyclist Association does. And if you want to in be involved in that, you pay a fee, goes to a good cause, and they will be kicking off them 11 a.m. Uh, just across from the city building here in downtown Jackson at the H&K Sound location. Tomorrow is community cleanup day in Oak Hill. Uh, if you want to get rid of some of your bigger things, grass clippings, some other furniture like that, you need to set it out uh, at the curb no later than 7 a.m. and crews will be around all day to pick up those items. Also at the Jackson County Fairgrounds, a dinner in the dust event will take place. We've been uh, promoting this for some time. This is a fundraiser for the fairgrounds and the fair board so they can make improvements to the grounds there. Uh, for a $35 ticket, as far as I know, they're still available. 
uh, you can uh, not only get a great dinner, but you can also uh, hear a free concert that's part of it from Dan McCarty. And next weekend, the, uh, or next week rather, the city of Wellston will do its spring cleanup uh, activity. Uh, that's once again where you can get rid of some larger items and you set those out at the same time you would set out your garbage. So that's easy to remember when to do that. But you know, if your garbage goes on Monday, you need to remember to be ready to do that Monday, but that will go through the entire week, Monday through Friday. Okay, on the sports side, the Benton County Invitational Track Meet was held last night and uh, some of our local teams were involved. I believe Jackson, Wellston, and of course the host Vikings were there. And some of our local teams and athletes did very well. On the girls' side, the Jackson Iron Ladies actually won the track meet. The Benton County girls were fourth. On the boys' side, the Benton County boys finished second and Jackson finished fourth. Also, uh, the Jackson Ironmen will be back in action tonight against the Chillicothe Cavaliers. We'll have that game on the radio. 105.3 FM and 13 and, and Fox Sports 13:30 AM. The Ironmen are 14 and 2, tied for first place in the Frontier Athletic Conference. This is a Frontier Athletic Conference game against the Cavaliers, so another big game. Jennifer, we will be there to bring you all the action. Looks like we're going to have sunny skies and pleasant temperatures. That's right. We'll I'm going to get it. out of here because we have some very special guests. We appreciate them coming down from MacArthur to talk to us. And it looks like there's going to be a lot of fun next weekend in MacArthur. That's I'll tell exactly you all about right. it. That's right, Pete. Thank you so much. Thank you. Of course, Pete's morning news update brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. If you are looking to buy or sell or have any real estate needs, give Nia a call 740-418-4135 and she'll be out working hard for you. All right, um, yeah, you guys can head on over if you like. Uh, let's get on over to your zip printing weather forecast where right now we're focusing on those graduates and uh, would it be a high school graduate? Well, of course, but how about your preschool graduates, your kindergarten graduates, your college graduates, all of those graduates that you want to show a little bit of love toward. Of course, they uh, can do great things at zip printing. Yard signs, banners, t-shirts, um, announcements, all of that fun stuff. All right, your weekend weather forecast looks like pretty darn good. Mostly sunny today, highs around 64. For tonight, clear with patchy frost, lows around 36. So if you do have any of those veggie plants or anything out uh, overnight, might want to get them covered up. For Saturday, highs around 69 with sunny skies. Saturday night, mostly clear, lows around 51. And then a gorgeous day on Sunday with partly cloudy skies and highs, yep, around 80 degrees. And looks kind of like really good temperatures for the next few days. Like uh, beginning of your work week, Monday, Tuesday, 75. Um, so yeah, not too shabby. All right, so we have a lot of special guests here in the studio today. And of course, we have our friends from representing the Wild Turkey Festival. So the first friends that we have are, let's see, Bill Beckley and our friend Chris Cram. And you two are the, what, what's your official title? Oh, I'm the chair of the uh, committee that uh, works on the festival. Okay. And I, I don't know what my title is. <laughs> I, I don't hold an office, but... Um, Mr. Do-It-All? Help no, out? No, not really, but I've just been there forever. So, uh, But I, I'm in charge of the one of the co-chairs of the Queens. Okay. And also um, of, the, of the rides and the food vendors at the festival. Okay, and Chris, many, many of uh, people might know you over the years from the Chris Cram gourmet elephant ear booth that we've talked about numerous times here on the program but you kind of retired from that didn't you i did i did <laughs> i was getting old <laughs> no just experienced well that's a better word yeah that's what we're going with all right so guys before we get to our queens because we do have them here in the studio and i'm interested to know in in um their adventures over the past not just one year but two years um but fellows Tell us what challenges, of course, there wasn't a wild turkey festival last year. What challenges did you face? I mean, my goodness, 
you know, you're you're trying to do a festival where a month ago you may or may not been have been able to do it. So, what all has happened in the past couple of years? Well, the, I guess the biggest challenge has been the uncertainty uh, coming into uh, 2021. We still really didn't have any any notion whether this was even going to be allowed at this point. Um, of course, it, the restrictions that were put in place last spring and then extended last November uh, never really came off until I believe it was April. So we, we started meeting again late January, early February, I think, Chris, and uh, yes. to say, you know, what are we going to do? Are we, are we going to move forward? Um, hoping or do we just shut it down because several of the sh festivals did just shut down they didn't even bother and as a result we're the first in the state that's a part of our association that uh, will be back in business so we're anticipating a large crew um, but once those those were lifted uh, we had uh, many things already in place where we were ready to move forward so in the past eight weeks I'd say we've completed the work that we normally do in eight months. So uh, there's several of us that are quite tired and, and ready for this to uh, happen. You know, and, and I was thinking that, I mean, again, this uncertainty thing, it's, it's you know, people don't understand when you're planning a fair or a festival, it's a year round project. When, when it's over, you start for the next year. There's no time to, to dilly dally or to put off um, planning. So, how were you able to secure entertainment, food vendors, all of that with all the uncertainty? On the on the entertainment side, um, we just made contact and and uh, tried to explain, and, and all the all the artists understand that. Of course, they're in the same boat. They're right? in the same boat. Yeah. They were they were shut down for a year as well. Um, so everything was kind of contingent on these guidelines being relaxed to some extent. Um, so that was understanding. Now on the food side, Chris, I think you know some of the vendors travel in other states, so um, they may have been operating, they may have not. So I'll let you say um, about that. Yeah, the food vendors. Um, well, most of our food vendors have been there for many years as Jennifer you know mm -hmm. that by attending and doing many remotes there for um, 80 years like myself and, um, <laughs> but uh, I know when I age you I age myself so it's okay Chris. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, we have a couple food vendors that didn't realize that they were uh, Ohio was going to open back up so they booked on with uh, a show, an amusement company to play Florida and Georgia and the Carolinas. Oh. And I mean, they had already paid their rent for 2021, which they had paid for 20 and just let it ride. They didn't want refunds and um, they're unable to attend. So we were able to replace those vendors, you know, just with a one year contract and the other vendors will be back in 2022. So it was quite a scramble and also with some of the amusement companies. Um, you know, they're not going out right now because, you know, they don't have enough help, you know, for labor, um, the insurance purposes, and also the, um, you know, if they get the rides inspected, each ride costs, you know, per dollar to inspect. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, um, if they don't have a spot, you know, several spots till say like the 4th of July, you know, it's hard for them to keep a crew on and keep their payroll going. So um, we actually um, had to switch ride companies just because our ride company is not coming out till the 4th of July. But it, luckily we are having Kissel Amusements and they were a cousin of the people that were there. So we were, were very happy to have them come this year to replace the other Kissel company that was there before. So um, yeah, it's been somewhat of a, a struggle and um, but, you know, we're happy to see all the people that have been there for many years and looking forward to the food and hoping the weather will be really good and uh, see everyone in the region come and uh, enjoy the festival. You know, and, and being the first festival of the season, I mean, in our area anyway, the Wild Turkey Festival is always 
just it's the best because it's the kickoff to fair and festival season i've always said and um, that's also a blessing and a curse because um, it's a blessing when you get to say I'm the first one and here we are but it's also a curse when we've been dealing with a global pandemic for a year and a couple of months now and you all have to be kind of the guinea pigs and figuring out how to how to run um, a fa fair and festival or a festival safely because the whole point is to get a lot of people there to enjoy it right so what have been the challenges in planning that and, and um, what will be some of the protocols that you all have implemented or discussed? Well, I, I, uh, I started this uh, the process of, of thinking about the guidelines that we were going to have to deal with when the governor first released the guidelines for county and independent fairs. They were, they were released actually before festivals even though they don't start until July and festivals typically start in late <laughs> April, May. So uh, there was that sense of frustration that fairs know what they can do, but festivals don't. Uh, but then, what was it, about a month ago, three weeks ago, when the governor came on and, and said, forget everything I said, let's just use common sense, people. <laughs> we're we're going to remove everything but we need to keep in place the common sense principles. And the, so that's what we're gonna go with. We're going with, um, if you don't feel well, stay home. Uh, please wear a mask, uh, social distance, keep your group size to 10 people or smaller with uh, a distance between those groups. Those should be cohort groups that are, that are together in that size. Um, and the one that is, is puzzling and but it, it exists uh, is um, please be seated if you're eating and drinking which is hard to understand how that works at a fair or a festival <laughs> <laughs> but Amen. Because, because it's walking around food is what they're selling um, so those are the basic principles that we're operating under we're going to have our um, volunteers take a daily temperature check and record that and then uh, we're also, uh, the vendors and, and, and the ride companies have their own set of responsibilities that they have to maintain as well. Things like hand sanitizer and individual packets of mustard and ketchup instead of being able to squirt it out of a bottle and those things. And they have to sanitize surfaces regularly. Yeah, my living room has tons of hand sanitizers mm -hmm. that we're gonna be putting poles up with hand sanitizing <laughs> stuff all over the festival. <laughs> yes, and you know, and that's just par for the course now. It's just like our, our normal everyday life, right? Yes. So what are the, um, what are the ride companies facing as far as their um, restrictions? I mean, are they having to clean rides or, or do you know? Well, I don't exactly know. I, just I don't know either. I haven't heard that like address. From like talking that I believe they have to sanitize every hour. Okay. Um, I think for a while there was like talk about it was sanitizing after every ride. Yeah. But I don't think that that is true now. I do believe that it is after every hour of operation they do like, you know, stagger, you know, each ride so it's not all at the same time and they sanitize, you know, the rails and the seats and what have you. But I also believe that they have like hand sanitation at each ride that you know they can do that and of course you know proper mask that part two plus you know like it you know bill said you know you just need to go with the people you you know you came with you know mm -hmm. obviously you know you can't put 10 people in a seat on a ride but you know it's so i guess you know we're going to be finding out a lot, a lot here in about a week so <laughs> Um, yeah, and and you know it is. You, you mentioned the fact that we're kind of the guinea pig, and that was one of the things that hit us early on. Was that you know if we're going to be the first festival, we're going to be scrutinized. You know, um, uh, we're, we're it, if we mess up, uh, there are a hundred other festivals in the state that are going to pay. So we have to uh, make sure that. We can comply as much as possible and remain safe. Don't become a super spreader event, I guess. It's, it's kind of like I want to want to think about it. Um, but, uh, yeah, we just ask folks to use the common sense principles that you've been practicing for the past year. Um, 
it uh, I no, feel it, like we're all it, used it, to it now you know like just yeah, we are, do what you've been doing we are but but you know they, they, <laughs> they talk about the, the COVID fatigue and, and they people are tired of this and tired of that and um, I think that's going to show next weekend if the weather is anything like it is today. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to uh, experience a pretty good crowd, I think. Uh, I would say that's an understatement of the century. So, well, let's um, get to our queens, and then I want to get back to some of the entertainment if you if you guys are, are happy to talk about that for a moment. But um, we do have our queens in the studio, and they are just lovely young ladies. And, again, have had to pull double duty and be the queen in attendance for the past two years instead of one year. So welcome, ladies. Hi. <laughs> We're so happy to have you here. First off, introduce yourselves. Tell everybody who you are. Um, my name is Taylor Moore, and I'm the 2019 Wild Turkey Festival second attendant. My name is Mackenzie Radeval, and I'm the Wild Turkey Festival first attendant. Hi, everyone. My name is Sydney Knox, and I'm the 2019 Wild Turkey Festival queen. All right. And, um, I mean, I think it's kind of... Uh, the first question is, what's it been like to do a double duty and be uh, the queen in attendance for two years? Is that something you thought you were signing up for? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we were happy to be there. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, I know that uh, it's always bittersweet to give up your crown, so you got to keep it a little longer than most, huh? Oh, yeah. History. Yeah. <laughs> History makers. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So tell everybody, um, let's start with the queen. What, um, what are your plans for the future as far as school and, and all of that? Where are you headed? So I am currently, I just finished up with my freshman year at Ohio University in Athens and I'm still trying to decide what major I want to choose. Right now I'm currently in the undecided um, university college. I'm trying to figure out between um, early childhood education and sort of like a business finance track. So um, I am going to Ohio University in Chillicothe and I'm actually starting summer classes. I'll be done with the festival on the 9th and then the 10th I'm going into summer classes so that'll be fun and I'm going into early childhood education and I'm just really having fun and just figuring out how to be an adult so it's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah have fun with it because it doesn't get any easier I promise. <laughs> Um, yeah, I also just finished my first year of college at um, Ohio University, and I am a pre-nursing student, so I actually just switched to pre-nursing. I was pre-med, but I didn't <laughs> like that route. So. <laughs> <laughs> totally understandable. So, ladies, let's talk for a minute, thinking back back to uh, 2000, well, I guess, 19, um, when you actually were able to go out and about. Tell us about, um, starting with our queen, wh what was your favorite festival and why? Well, that's a hard one. We went to quite a few I festivals. I mean, let's <laughs> take out your own. That doesn't okay. count. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so probably, if I had to think back, um, probably Commercial Point Homecoming. That was, we went on my birthday, and it was just overall a great day. Um, I got fried cheese, so that was probably my favorite memory. I've, that's my favorite festival food. And then um, <laughs> after the festival and the parade and everything, we went out to eat all together as uh, Court and our parents and Chris took us, and we had Pizza Cottage pizza. So that was a great day overall. That <laughs> great would <birthday>. be. <laughs> my favorite was the pumpkin show. I love fall time, and I had pumpkin ice cream, and we were leaving the parade right behind the Pumpkin Show girls, and we were really good friends with the Pumpkin Show girls. And I just, I loved that festival. Everyone is so happy to be there. There's so many people, and the, I love the big pumpkins. So that's, that's definitely my favorite. Yeah, Kenzie still mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Pumpkin Festival is my favorite too. Um, we became really close with those girls. So we got to um, support them, and they're actually coming back to our um, festival to support us, and they're 
long gone past queen so <laughs> that's really cool that is really cool mm -hmm. and you know it, it it's a little easier now and you know back when i was the horse queen in 1990 <laughs> it wasn't um <laughs> it wasn't as easy to keep up with with folks and whatever we didn't have that little thing called the internet and social media and and all of that so you all are in cell phones you all are fortunate that you can maintain these really cool relationships and it's a I mean, to me, it's a really interesting sorority that you all belong to and, and um, hopefully keep up those great, great uh, friendships and relationships. Um, so what, okay, so let's talk for a minute about the Queen Pageant this weekend. What all is your involvement in that? So um, the pageant starts at seven o'clock on Saturday and the interviews actually start at two if I'm correct. We have seven contestants competing so they will go from one to seven in their interview times, their 10 minute interviews. So throughout that time all of us will just be there um, to be encouraging, participate in the pageant and just be there for all the girls and help them have a great time. And what was your favorite thing about um, trying out? Did you, did you get to sing and dance and do all the fun stuff? <laughs> We actually did dance and sing on stage right yeah. before the pageant. So yeah. yeah, my favorite thing was learning how to gobble. I <laughs> that was my absolute favorite thing. Okay, I'm going to interrupt here. We're going to have to hear. I that. was gonna, getting ready yeah. to say, well, you can't not do that. You, <laughs> oh, you brought oh, that up. You have to do it on the radio now. <laughs> Don't even worry. <laughs> I actually gobbled at a random stranger. <laughs> right, so, all right. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good! Thank you. Yeah. Hours, hours of practice. She, yeah, like, you, she may want to tell you that, like, um, every contestant gets asked that, and, like, a husband of a past um, court member pays for the scholarship, a $100 scholarship, to whoever the best turkey gobble is. Oh. And Mackenzie was the one that won that last year. So she received a $100 scholarship for being the best wild turkey gobble during the pageant. Proudest achievement. <laughs> I mean, wow, that is, it should be. So how did you learn that? Hours of YouTube. <laughs> There's like turkey calls that are three hours long and I just put in my headphones and walk around the house and just like strut. This is what I want. <laughs> I remember before the Goals. pageant, you told me that that was, if you didn't get on court, then you just wanted to win that. <laughs> yes, that's all I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. I love it. <laughs> so thinking back to your own festival, what was uh, your most memorable, um, I guess, time or, or a, occurrence that happened um, at the Wild Turkey Festival? So I would say um, one of my most memorable times at the festival. So as contestants, we were at the festival um, on opening day Thursday the whole entire time and same thing on Friday and Saturday. Um, so one of my favorite parts was all the contestants got matching bracelets at one of the vendors and we just wore them throughout the festival and the night of crowning. It's just kind of like a bond. We all became super close and great friends. Uh, I actually danced and sang on stage. <laughs> That was a good time, and I ate a turkey leg, and I walked around in a finalist sash and crown, and was just eating a turkey leg, selling turkey drops, and I loved getting to know the contestants too, and we really did create a bond. It was a really close sisterhood between us. Yeah, I agree. Um, we all rode rides in <laughs> dresses and heels, so that was interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. Made friends with the cheese curd guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, who wouldn't? I mean, hello. <laughs> yeah, free cheese curds. <laughs> Lots of free food. I mean, if there's nothing better in an affair in a festival than fried cheese, and I would agree with our queen on that. <laughs> yes, for sure. One hundred percent. That is, uh, yeah. Look out. Okay, so the strange thing is, it's been two years, and you girls really are just now getting to reign over your festival, correct? Yes. So explain that a little bit, because I think people are like, huh? What they've, <laughs> they've been the queen for two years, but they haven't gotten to reign over their own festival. How does that work? So um, the Turkey Festival is actually the first, one of the first festivals um, of the OFE Festival Association. So 
we have our pageant a week to two weeks prior to the festival and the night of the pageant nobody is crowned um, and then the Saturday of our festival somebody is crowned and then so we were crowned on that Saturday of 2019 and then we traveled and went to all the festivals of uh, festival season season in 2019 and then um, the festival in 2020 got canceled so we just stayed on court and we're ready to have fun at the festival. <laughs> That's right, and finally get to reign over your own festival. Yes. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's kind of well, funny because we always joked with Chris, like, please keep us another year. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, you're never getting rid of us. Well, <laughs> as my mother says, sometimes you have to watch what you wish for. Because yes. that is true. <laughs> they actually did say that. So. <laughs> so. And Jennifer, I, w I would like to make a comment. Um, Absolutely. We don't use the R word around the festival the rain oh we kept saying rain and festival and that's what do we say then we don't mention that word around our festival oh. because it will but we don't want it got to. you <laughs> well i spell my word differently <laughs> it's a homophone no it will not uh rain on your parade how's that i won't let it <laughs> fingers crossed that it doesn't <laughs> that's exactly right um, okay, so let's get back to the entertainment and talk about, I know it's obviously been challenging trying to, well, you're hired, you're, well, maybe you're hired, or you're, well, I don't know, we're all up in the air. So what kind of entertainment can people look forward to at this year's Wild Turkey Festival, which will begin um, a week from yesterday, correct? Yes. Yeah, all right. What kind of entertainment are you guys doing? Uh, the entertainment. Uh, well, everything's entertaining in Benton County, but we're going to have special <laughs> entertainment um, for the festival. This year, we're starting off on Thursday evening uh, with our opening. The band will be playing, uh, entertaining folks, as well as playing the national anthem. And we'll have some special guests from Benton County Athletics, I believe, that are going to be turning. Yes, the girls' opening. Um, state runner-up basketball team in Division Two. Um, is going to be cutting the ribbon along with the reigning queen and court. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also Olivia Mayer, which was in the state cross-country meet, um, will also be participating in that. So we look forward to seeing those young ladies on some great accomplishments this year. What the heck do you have in the water over there in Benton County? <sighs> well, I don't know, but they were, they were very fun to watch, and it was very good for the community as well, and they're a great group of young ladies. Um, after that, on Thursday evening, we have a series of karaoke contests. Um, uh, the first one is starting at uh, about 6.30 probably, and it's going to be uh, for Vinton County residents only, age 16 and older. Um, that's going to be followed by 8 o'clock with a male open competition, which is open to the world. And then uh, at 9 is a female open competition. Uh, we have Jennifer, you're going to be there, right? <laughs> no. Um, detail, <laughs> I may detail. be there, but not participate. You would not want. You would pay me to not participate. <laughs> uh, but there are cash prizes for those. Uh, it's uh, for the open contest. It's two hundred, one hundred and fifty dollars are, are, are the are the three uh, cash prizes for each of the two divisions. Um, there are details on our Facebook page, also on our new website, uh, vcwtf.org, on uh, how folks can enter those. There's a phone number to call for the person that's putting that on. His name is Terry. He did it two years ago. Um, Friday, uh, we'll, we're starting off with Aaron Atkinson, who's an artist, uh, been in Nashville recently recording, has a song called Say I Do. I think on the radio right now, country artist, he's going to be performing solo act with his guitar, but he's from Athens County, up and comer, uh, getting a lot of buzz on our Facebook page as well with that event. Uh, following that up with uh, uh, Michelle Robinson Band, she was there two years ago or three years ago, um, three years ago. Yeah, it all blends together for me. <laughs> uh, Fair. But Michelle, Michelle's from Cincinnati, um, is... Uh, recognized as one of the top country performers down in that region. So we're looking forward to seeing Michelle again. On uh, Saturday, 
Um, lots of things. Saturday's the big day. Lots of things going on. Of course, we have the parade uh, coming up at six o'clock. But well, before that, we have um, the Nostalgics, a big band from Lancaster, playing big band hits. Um, uh, they're very, very good. We had them there two years ago. Uh, that'll be at three, and then uh, Chase Band uh, from the tri-state area, Ashland, Huntington, Ironton. Uh, will be coming and playing about 7.30 after we announce the Queens. And uh, that's following that up with Red Planet, which uh, group, ba basically the guys that used to be Junkyard Republic from Vinton County, but now they're playing a harder version of rock. They've been recording and chasing Bigfoot throughout Vinton County during <laughs> the pandemic. So they're, they're gonna be uh, performing their version of hard rock music. And, um, but Sydney's, Uncle was in that band, right? Yep. Yeah. Uncle Mikey. Uncle Mikey. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's kind of the rundown of the entertainment. Did you get to mention the cornhole tournament and the run? That's that's next, Chris. Oh, okay. Life. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, some of the and besides the musical type entertainment, we have activities. Uh, planning a four a five k. On Saturday morning, starting at nine o'clock, that's being sponsored by uh, my employer as well as Mackenzie's uh, mm -hmm. Sojourners Care Network in MacArthur in Southeast Ohio, and then um, we uh, will be having a cornhole tournament starting at ten on Saturday, which um, is sponsored by Nimco. Sponsored by we got a sponsor now. Yeah, so sponsored by Nimco in MacArthur. Um, so once again, the, we'll, we have, or if we don't have yet, we will have details on our Facebook page and our new website, vcwtf.org. It just went live yesterday. Um, and then uh, we also have the baby contest coming up on Sunday. And entries, early entries were being accepted through this week. And then uh, if they will be accepting um, entries the day of the, the event, which is Sunday morning. Uh, they come about 11 o'clock, 11.30 for sign up. That's kind of the big rundown. Have I missed anything, Chris? Yeah, we'll crown a new little Mr. Gobbler and little Mrs. Mm -hmm. Gobblerette. We'll do that on Sunday at 12.30 at the stage. Um, and uh, we don't know how many contestants we have for that because that goes by like a penny a vote. We do have several that we have received their entry form back and um, that had to be postmarked by the 28th. So still could get some in the mail because everyone knows how the mail is these days. <laughs> and those uh, little folks will be participating in the parade. So you get to see all those contestants in the parade. And um, so yeah, I, I think you pretty much hit it. And that's Kids Day. And at Kids the festival, Day. So there'll be a ride uh, matinee that matinee. day as well. On I, Sunday. I believe, yes, yeah. from 12 to 5, and I believe that's $15 for all the rides you can ride for those five hours. And also ride matinee on Thursday, the opening day, from 5 to 10, same price. And also on, on Sunday, we've got the car show. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah. I was going to, I was getting there, okay. just like your wife. And, and, <laughs> and by the way, I just uh, arranged with uh, Mr. Pelletier that we're going to have uh, a remote musical performance uh, from... Uh, 98.7 is going to be on site uh, with a remote awesome. for the car show. So, And where will the car show be held? It'll be held in the lot behind uh, the Herbert Westcote Memorial Library um, on uh, High Street. Very good. That's always a big one, too. Yeah, really nice paved lot there. They just yeah. redid that lot. So it's really good. It's a lot closer to the festival than the um, Vic County Bank employees parking lot. And... Um, yeah, so, and like all the sponsors will be listed in our program. Um, we don't want to leave anybody out. I know we mentioned a couple today, um, but I, I probably shouldn't have done that because. Um, I know. But Never. they are listed, and they will be in the brochure and also in our other publications and, and advertising. And please know that how much appreciated you all are out there, right? Yes, yes, we've had a lot of great sponsors for um, I want to say 37 years, but it's really only 36 because we missed, but um, yeah, so. 
I and how long has your involvement been, Chris? That long. <laughs> <laughs> He was only I mean, three I just at the had time. to go there. Yeah. yeah. He was yeah. three. At the three, time. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to uh, rewind for a second. A few minutes ago, you mentioned that the band playing on Saturday night has been spending the pandemic searching for Bigfoot. I just go by their website and talking to Andy Allman. So, what, so we do not know what the likelihood of Bigfoot making an appearance at the Wild Turkey Festival <gasps> is. You never know. You never know. I Can mean, you give us, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely do you think it is for Bigfoot to make an appearance? Seven. Seven. I would say, wouldn't you think that Sydney would know that? <laughs> Since her uncle plays in that band? I think she's probably his agent, but she's not really saying that. <laughs> I wish I knew the answer to if Bigfoot was going to be there or not, but I don't think they've found him yet, so that's why they're still playing music. So we'll just have to see. You'll have to come out and have fun at the festival and... Hopefully see Bigfoot. So, <laughs> there you go. Okay, so you learned the turkey call. Can you learn the Bigfoot call? Oh, yeah, that's doable. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Good. Yeah. Oh, we expect that. Oh, I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we expect it all. I will. <laughs> ne never dare her to do something. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to tell what they'll do at the pageant this weekend. Fair. Fair. Yep. Now, uh, will the pageant be open to the public, or is it just parents only? How is that working? Um, actually, it is open to the public, and there is limited um, seating uh, capacity, which has not been like before. So it's going to be on a first-come, first-served basis. So we will be counting heads as they come in the door, and the doors will open at 6 o'clock. And, of course, you know, we are going to, you know, make sure that the parents of the um, contestants get in, of course, you know. So, sure. Um, but yeah, um, come out. It's going to be a full pageant, just like always. And Jennifer, you guys have been there forever, and your dad used to be an MC there when we first started at the old high school. And man, we go back a long way. We do. I think my very first remote broadcast on the radio, dad called me one day, and I was in college, and said, Hey, uh, <clears throat> I need you to come down here to Benton County. And I said, to what? And he said, the Wild Turkey Festival. I don't have anyone to, to do the broadcast from there. And he handed me a microphone and I said, what do I say? And I think Chris might have been the very first person I talked to. So you are responsible for this, yeah. just to let you know. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it could be or, or a bad thing. Yeah. I'm not sure which. All right, ladies, let's get back to you. We have a couple of minutes left. I want to know what um, what is your favorite food that you're looking forward to this year at the Wild Turkey Festival? Give some promotion on some of the great food booths that, that people can, can find. So I would definitely say the fried cheese. I've been ecstatic about it for weeks, ever since I think somebody mentioned that maybe the fried cheese people weren't going to come, but we found somebody to come, so I'm, I'm excited about the fried cheese. I'm excited about the turkey leg. It's, <laughs> it's that big. It is, it is truly a turkey leg, and I'm ready to just munch on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't... Um, I'm excited... She's like, I, I can't follow that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sweet girl. I'm excited for the elephant ears. They're my favorite. So, what, what did we get? The, the apple, all oh, the apple dumplings. The apple oh, dumplings. those are really good. The apple dumplings are very Looking good, too. Looking forward to that, yes. All of it. All of it. Yeah, yeah. I get everything. At literally everything. I mean, I feel like you have to just go from booth to booth and try a little bit of everything, or you haven't, you know, done the festival justice. Oh, that's the plan. Yeah. Exactly. That is the plan. So yes. you totally have my permission to do so, not the Indian. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jennifer, I have your location for the pineapple icebox cake thing. Booth. Oh, do you? I do. Chris will just not let me live this down that I don't have that all the time. <laughs> So you want me to come do a pineapple icebox cake booth? I do. <laughs> I think you'd be really busy. I think you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. I never thought about doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I call you on the day before and say, Hey, it's I'm already coming. marked off. Oh, okay. We marked that Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> the ice, icebox cake booth. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll think about it. Yeah, I'm sure your mom will help you. Yeah, probably. Yeah. She come up and sass you all around. That's right. That's right. 
<laughs> well, we have a couple of minutes left. Is there anything that you all uh, wanted to tell our viewers before we let you get out of here for the day? Because you do have a very busy weekend and, of course, week next week with the festival. I just hope to see everybody out there. hope that the weather's really good. And, uh, hey, come to the pageant this weekend. Get your feet wet. And uh, it's really going to be pretty entertaining. Um, as you've seen, Mackenzie's already in rare form. So <laughs> come. I'm sure she's going to be doing her turkey gobble. So, And we're, we're not going to do a live stream just because it's something we've never done. And um, that we were approached about it, but we're not going to be doing that. So if you want to see what happens, come on out. You need to come out in person. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Well, best of luck to you this weekend and also throughout the rest of the festival next week. And we are so excited to have a festival happening. And no pressure or anything. Don't mess it up. We'll try. <laughs> I'm just teasing you guys. Will. <laughs> now, if she messes up the turkey call, we've got some, some serious issues. Let's hear it one more time. Yep. One more oh, time. Yes. <laughs> she's so good at that yeah. i do want to know what does a turkey leg taste like like a chicken leg or is it different i thought it kind of tasted like bacon it the skin tasted like bacon but it also tasted like turkey i think so it tastes like ham it does taste like ham is it too. smoked is that why yes. yeah okay i gotcha okay fair enough well i expect video of this i want video evidence of the turkey leg you'll get yeah. it girl don't worry okay. there's pictures All right. too <laughs> there's pictures if you get us a photo of you eating the turkey leg we'll put it in the newspaper i'll do that that's right <laughs> i will do that and right here front and center on the morning show <laughs> yes <laughs> sounds good all right thank you all so much for coming in and uh best of luck to you we at the festival the support. thank you thank oh you. absolutely we know we love you all right, well, before we get out of here for the day, did want to thank uh, the filling station, the store Broadway and Penn and Wellston and Quick Stop here in Jackson, home of the crispy crunchy chicken. If you're hungry this weekend, you can visit one of the whole Zaffle family stores uh, from Hoser's Pizza on down to the chicken and everything in between, uh, subs, salads, sandwiches, you name it, they've got it for you and all the convenience items that you could possibly need. Also want to give a shout out to Mark Carmen and all the gang at Carmen's Used Cars. If you visit their website at carmensusedcars.com, you can, of course, see the vehicles they have on the lot. But boy, is it going to be a pretty weekend to get out and about and do that car shopping uh, in person. And um, it's very safe. They can even, if you call them, they'll have that car pulled around for you and ready to go if you want to test drive it. So just give them a ring out there or stop by and see them and they'll take great care of you. County Road or s corner of Standpipe Road and State Route 93 South is what I'm trying to say, easy for me. All right, well, thank you all so much for watching. Thanks to our friends from the Vinton County Wild Turkey Festival. And we hope that uh, you get to the contest this weekend and out to the festival next week, beginning on Thursday. Have a great weekend, everyone, and enjoy some great weather, and we'll be right back here on Monday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.